Now we're going to move into your next MSA. You have the 6,000, you have the 6,000 plus basic or extreme. Which one do you have? I'm going to go grab it because it's on the chart. Here. When you it's bring it, plus, if you bring it in, sir, and the buttons are black, it's a basic. If it's anything outside of that, it'll say on the side, it'll say plus or extreme and the buttons will be gray. That'll tell you really quickly. So when you look at it, it's got about the same field of view as the 5200 did. It'll see about the same temperature range. It claims the same resolution, but it's a much better picture. It has a high and low sensitivity as far as seeing the fire. And then you have up to eight different application color palettes. Now, I'm not a smart guy, but I don't know about you, but anytime I've given a firefighter buttons in a high stress environment, what happens if I give you lots of buttons to play with? Break them, lose them, or otherwise. I start pushing buttons with my NASA space glove and end up somewhere I'm not supposed to, and it doesn't do what I want it to do. That has become a $6,000 door chalk. Hey, where's the tick? It's holding the door open back there, sir. <laughs> they get frustrated with it. But what you need to realize in a newer camera like this one, if you are in one of those application modes that are not fire ground specific, tap the green button briefly, guess what it'll do? It'll go right back to TI Basic, which is the recommended color palette for fire attack, which is black, gray, white, yellow, orange, red. It sounds smart until you look at all these other options they give you, which these are all non-fire ground specific color palettes used in the thermography industry for low temperature, low contrast inspection environments. There's only one on here that should be used for fire, which is white hot or NFBA TI basic. Iron bow, high color, black hot, search and rescue, fire and ice are not designed for high heat environments. Why would they do that? To impress the client. Here's your advantages of this camera though. It has a very large screen, very bright viewfinder, it stays in high sensitivity longer, allowing you to see the victim better. That thermal sensitivity, the camera is pretty low when it's in high sensitivity between 40 and 78, which is good. It's high resolution, it's fast refresh rate, uh, but that's where it ends. The disadvantage of it is the size of Thor's hammer. It's about as heavy. I think it's the heaviest camera on the market next to the uh, Draeger UCF 9000, which is pretty darn heavy. And it doesn't show color until 1,000 degrees and low sensitivity. The picture is pretty sharp in grayscale, as you can see here, my friends from Australia. See the green triangle in the upper left-hand corner, though? Low sensitivity. And this is in Celsius because they believe Celsius is better than Fahrenheit, so you have to deal with that. This is our uh, 6,000 gray, gray buttons. <laughs> gray buttons. What does it say on the side, sir? Plus? Evolution 6,000 plus. Okay, so you got the in-between model, the basic, the plus, and the extreme. Should be able to record with it, if I remember correctly. This is your cheat sheet for what all of these things mean, right? But I, what I want you to understand, though, is stay away from the spot temperature and, and fire attack. And if you ever see that red triangle with the thermometer in the middle at the top, that's the over temperature warning. This is the standard symbols on all newer cameras have to be like this. Green triangle means, in the upper left-hand corner, means low sensitivity, high heat. Red thermometer with flashing red triangle with flashing thermometer in the middle, you're in a bad place. You have a color bar on the right-hand side between zero and the upper end of it. What I don't like about this camera is, have you noticed how tight the colors are? How about this tight? In high sensitivity, the, the, the colors are only about 19 to 10 degrees apart. So zero to 291 is all grayscale. 291 to 302 is yellow. 302 to 311 is orange. 311 is all red. You know what I hardly ever see with this camera? Yellow. It's gray, white, red, because it goes too fast. And then when you look at low sensitivity, zero to 999 degrees is all grayscale, black, gray, white. And then at 1,000, I start to see yellow in 50 degree increments. You can melt aluminum at 1,070. Don't you think we need a little bit of a warning prior to this? I would think so. And this video got me in a lot of trouble. So I'm just, this is like confession. So if you take cameras and you compare them side by side, right? 
and see which one switches faster and just doing grading on them. We do a purchasing implementation class where we basically put the camera through its paces. I give you a lesson plan, you grade it. I get out of the way and you tell me which one you're gonna buy based on your score, not me. So I don't sell cameras, I do training and education. But this is your 5200 on the right, 15 years old. And this is an MSA 6000, which is a newer, better camera on the left. And they're gonna point, we're gonna point it down to the floor and we're gonna show you that one of these takes less pixel count to switch from high to low sensitivity. And one of these never changes. High sense, low sense comparison between a newer camera and an old camera. Point them down at the floor for a second, Brian. Both cameras are in high sense mode, which is zero to 300 degrees. You raise them up and point them at the three burners. Notice how fast the older one changes to low sense versus the newer one. Go ahead. On the right, immediately Bang. switch to low sense. On the left, which is a better, newer camera, did not because it requires 32% of the overall field of view of the pixels to be over 300 degrees. Which means you have to be that much closer to the target before you realize you're not in the 300 degree environment. You will be six to eight feet away from the object when it switches. Does anybody want to be six to eight feet away from an angry bear and then say, I got a pocket knife, I'm going to attack you. No, I want whatever nozzle you have on the back of your truck and I want you to be a long range sniper, not a pocket knife assassin. And in order, in order for you to do that, you need to have a camera that picks up the heat at a good distance and shows you what the threat is that you can easily identify. This one does not do well of that in fire. It does a great job for search. This is your MSA 6000. These are for my friends in Australia. They, they did some cool uh, container work. All right, he's gonna point the camera up at the convection currents. You can see the cameras in low sensitivity. Beautiful ocean-like waves moving over your head. That's hot. That is not cool, right? So it's moving. You can tell where the fire is and where it's going. When he points the camera back down, the triangle will go away, and he'll briefly bring it up right there. It's still in high sensitivity. Your camera in the MSA will show a little bit of color in high sensitivity at 270 degrees. Watch what happens when we keep playing, though. The average person would say, that is extremely hot, that is not. And it's the absolute reverse because the manufacturer chose that. And I'm going, that makes no sense because this, to an untrained eye, looks worse. This does not. And when in fact, this second image is actually worse. And then when I look at the fire room with the MSA camera that says it's 59 degrees Celsius, which is around 130 degrees Fahrenheit, I'm not trusting that spot temperature. I'm reading this big image here and, and trying to make my interpretation there.